My name is Douglas Rumbaugh, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to enable automatic incremental backups of your files in Pop! OS, or indeed any Linux distribution, but I'm using Pop! OS as the example here, using Deja Dupe, otherwise known as backups. So first thing we're going to want to do is install Deja Dupe. I'm going to go ahead and hop into the Pop! Shop in order to do this. And I've actually already installed it, but I'm going to walk you through this process anyway. There we go. As you can see, Pop Shop took a second there. Like I said, this software can be a little bit hit or miss. Uh, I mentioned that in my review. Actually, up until right now, this logo was also broken and rendering is just an X. I'll go ahead and cut that in too while we're digging on Pop Shop. Uh, but any, in any case, you'll have the option of a deb or a flat pack. Do the flat pack. You'll definitely want the Flatpak version. It's substantially newer. If you install the dev version, it should have all the same functionality, but the interface is going to look a lot different from what you see here. So I am using the Flatpak version, and that's the interface you're going to get. Okay, so we'll do away with that awful, awful program and fire up Deja Dupe. Now, Deja Dupe follows in what seems to be a long-standing tradition of GNOME applications in that it actually has two names. So notice if I search for Deja, what comes up is a program called Backups. Backups is Deja Dupe. So there's a, I guess, a, an easy name and then the actual name in much the same way that you have Web and Epiphany, for example. So we'll open Backups, and this is the interface that you get. Like most GNOME applications, it is incredibly straightforward to use. God help you if you want to do something complicated with it, but for the specific use case that it's designed to accomplish, it is very difficult to mess this up. I'm going to walk you through it anyway, though. So on the interface, we have the green click here button that says create my first backup, or we can restore from a previous backup. We're going to do that at the end when I show you how you can recover your files from a Deja Dupe backup in the event that the worst were to happen. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and click Create My First Backup. Now, you're going to have the option here to select folders to backup and folders to ignore. By default, it gives you your home directory and is going to ignore trash and downloads, which are fairly sensible. Depending upon how big your directories are and what you actually have in your home directory, you may want to ignore other things in order to reduce the amount of space this takes up on whatever your backup solution happens to be. For example, I ignore my Steam directory and also um, my local cache directory, so tilde slash dot cache. In this case, I'm going to just leave it all as defaults. One thing to bear in mind is that because this is running as the user, it's only going to have access to the stuff that the user has access to. So as an example, if I go here and I try and back up my Etsy folder, which is something you may want to do if you've heavily configured your system. You'll note I get the little exclamation mark of death. This folder can't be backed up because it does not have access to it. So do be aware of that. You'll need to make sure that the user running backup has access to the folders you are trying to back up. I suppose in principle you could probably run this thing as root and resolve the problem that way, or you could just manually make a copy of Etsy into your home directory that you own and do it that way as well. There are various workarounds. I'm going to leave this as the default. So now we select our storage location. So by default we have three options. We can back up to a local folder on our computer, which is perhaps useful if say you have an extra hard drive mounted or something and you want to back up to that or if you're just keeping strictly local backups for incremental stuff so you can say roll a file change back if you need to, which is something that you can do with Deja Dupe. It also has native support for Google Drive if you don't mind Google having all your files, although it's actually not that bad because as we'll see in a minute, Deja Dupe allows you to encrypt all of your stuff. So it's not like Google could see it anyway. Uh, or you can use just an arbitrary network server and plug in the lo network location. Now I have a free NAS box that I built sitting here on the local network. We're going to go ahead and use that. And we'll do this uh, video example as the name of the folder. And go ahead and hit forward. 
Okay. So here we go. We are allowed to set up an encryption password. You can check remember password. That's helpful because it allow when we set up automatic backups, uh, the remember password option will allow it to just back up without needing any interaction whatsoever. So I suggest you check that. And now it's going to create the initial backup. Okay, the initial backup has been completed. So now we can actually see what this interface is going to look like. Now, if I go ahead and just go into my NAS on uh, just a file explorer here, this is the backup we have, a video example. And if we open this up, you'll see it's not useful. We can't directly access the files. The reason for this is because, well, obviously I plugged in an encryption password, but beyond that, Deja Dupe is actually a front end to a backup solution called Duplicity. And Duplicity uses its own file format for storing all of the stuff, all of your data. So you need Duplicity then to access it later. Uh, what this means is that if you are using Deja Dupe as your backup solution, whenever you go to recover your files, if you need to access them for some reason, you'll need to have Deja Dupe installed on the computer or, or Duplicity if you want to do it manually. So do bear that in mind. It is not simply copying the files over to the remote storage location. It is actually packaging them up into a specific file format and you need Duplicity in order to unpack these things and get, get your files back. And of course, Deja Dupe will take care of that for you. Now, while we're here, if you want to recover files from a backup, you can simply go over to restore. Now, as I've mentioned before, we are doing what's called an incremental backup. So you can actually select the date and you can access your files as viewed on whatever date you happen to run your backup on. And it will keep track of all of your old backups as well. You can configure how far back it's going to keep them. So here we ran this on 9.7, so I can see 9.7. And if we had any other um, dates, they would show up here. Now, restoring a file from backup is fairly straightforward. Pick the file you want to restore. Uh, so let's, uh, as an example here, I'm going to go ahead and just delete this intracs.zip file. Those are the Python modules that we use for the programming course that I teach. And let's go ahead and restore this file back to here. So we can simply select from the date that we want, so the backup date that you want, the file that you want, and hit restore. It's gonna ask if you wanna put it back in the original location or put it somewhere else. Uh, I'm just going to leave it in the original location, click restore, it is going to restore the file for me. It was successful, and as you can see, the file has come back over here. So we have just recovered that, that specific file from our backup. Now that we have this configured and we are successfully making backups to our NAS, we want to ensure that this happens automatically for us. And all you have to do is click this toggle. And now it is going to automatically make a backup every X number of days. So if we go into preferences, we can actually configure this, our backup frequency. We can take backups weekly or daily. Again, this is a GNOME application, which means that your configurability is going to be rather low, but weekly and daily should be good enough for most use cases. Personally, I just use weekly. So you can also select how long you want to keep your backups for. You can keep them for forever, a year, or six months. Now, do bear in mind that regardless of what option you select here, Deja Dupe is still going to clean out old backups if you start to run out of space. So it will delete old stuff to make space for new stuff as you're backing up should your NAS or whatever your backup solution happens to be fill up. And that is setting up automatic weekly backups or daily backups if you prefer using Deja Dupe. So at this point you can honestly, you can just close the app and it will run happily in the background and take care of everything for you. So you no longer really have to think about it. Okay, so now that we have backups set up, let's talk about actually getting your files back should the worst happen. So for the moment, let's just pretend that our computer has kicked the bucket, so to speak, 
and so we've come into a new computer and or a new hard drive or whatever and we have installed backups so probably the easiest way to access your files is going to be through the same backups or deja dupe application so you'll want to as a first step install this and it brings us to our our same old song and dance right here now rather than clicking create my first backup if you want to recover files from an old backup you're going to want to say restore from previous backup and then here you need to you need to type in the same information you typed in before. So we have to tell it where our backup is located. And we need to specify the name of the backup folder. This is going to be the same name that we used when we created it initially. And when in doubt, you can always log in to the, your backup location and verify the name of the file from there. So it'll be the name of that folder. As a matter of fact, let's just do that. Video example, this is our backup directory. So we'll throw in video example. And it's going to check that folder for the backup and give you the option to restore from a particular date and ask for your encryption password. So it's very important that you remember what this encryption password is. You'll need it to recover your files. And then you can restore all the files to their original locations. And just hit restore. And it will happily do its thing. Put all your files back where they're supposed to be. And you'll be off to the races again. And very thankful for having set up a backup. Now in this case, it looks like we did error out. Uh, because, okay, yeah, we errored out on a flat pack thing. That's not super important. So it looks like the uh, var app deja dupe's own configuration file in the flat pack itself was uh, not writable. Anyway, that is setting up deja dupe to create regular incremental backups of your files, recovering individual files, which is useful if you accidentally delete something or if you need to roll some changes back and then also recovering all of your files should say your hard drive die or something from your backup onto the disk again, again using De Deja Dupe. It's a very useful piece of software. Uh, one thing that I should point out is that I have had mixed success with configuring automatic backups. So this is the Deja Dupe window for my, from my actual computer. Um, I'll go ahead and minimize this virtual machine. And now watch as it magically works right now. But when I try and back up automatically on here, it, it can't. And I haven't actually spent some time or I haven't spent much time trying to resolve this issue. It looks like based on, um, based on the error message that just popped up, which I've actually never seen before. So that must have been put in in the most recent update that I just installed. Uh, it looks like it has to do with per with background permissions and things like that. So I'll look into that a little bit further. But it doesn't look like it's necessarily guaranteed that you'll be able to simply toggle that and be done with it. I'll look into that. And if I can figure out why it doesn't work on my computer, I'll, uh, on this computer specifically, I will make a video about fixing that as well. And let me know if you have that problem in the comments too. I'd like to hear. I have gotten it working successfully with the automatic backups on virtual machines, as you saw. It also works just fine on my laptop. And that's about all that I have to say about this. Uh, backups are a very important thing. And whether you use Deja Dupe or some other backup solution, you really should be taking backups of your data. Remember that having two copies of your data is actually equivalent to having one. So you have to back it up. And also remember the general guidance of you want multiple backups if you can. Ideally, you want to have at least one on-site backup and one off-site backup. So something like Google Drive, OneDrive, what have you. Just, to ver just in case something terrible happens, if you have multiple copies in different locations, you're more likely to not lose all of your data. So general backup, general backup rules there, but very useful to bear in mind and utilize if you can. I hope that you found this video interesting and 
I'll see you in the next one as we continue in our adventures in Pop! OS.